Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, sponsored by Squarespace. And it's January, the first month of 2023, so I hope you've got your 2023 What's in the Night Sky calendars ready. There's still plenty of stock left, so if you follow the link in the video description, you can pick one up at a discounted price. But coming up this month, we have the Quadranted Meteor Shower. There's a conjunction between Venus and Saturn. There are two lunar occultations of Mars. There's a lunar occultation of Uranus, and we also look at some off-season Milky Way action. But let's start with a look at the Northern Hemisphere night sky. The night sky continues to be dominated by the winter constellations, in particular the winter hexagon, which is made up of bright stars from various winter constellations. That rises in the east as darkness falls, continues to cross the southern skies, where they all reach their highest point in the night sky, and then it will sink down towards the southwest and eventually the west in the pre-dawn hours. So the winter hexagon is made up of Sirius from the constellation Canis Major, Procyon from Canis Minor, Pollux from Gemini, Capella from the constellation Auriga, Aldebaran from the constellation Taurus, and Rigel whoop, from the very famous Orion. And this month as well, Mars is also joining that region of the sky. It can be found in the constellation Taurus. And after opposition last month, Mars will fade significantly this month from minus 1.2 magnitude to minus 0.3. Jupiter shines much brighter at magnitude minus 2.1 and it can be found in the constellation Pisces, which starts the night in the south, but then Jupiter will sink down to the west and set before local midnight. As the month goes by, Saturn sinks closer to the sun and becomes more difficult to spot in the evening twilight. But as it does so, the planet Venus comes up to meet it, and they get closer and closer and closer until we have a conjunction on the 22nd where they'll be less than 0.5 degrees close to one another. So that's within the diameter of the moon so they'll be very very close to one another in the evening skies in the southwest and a day later on the 23rd they'll be joined by a beautifully thin crescent moon and if you'd like to try and spot all five of the naked eye visible planets this month you can catch mercury in the morning skies towards the end of the month and it reaches greatest eastern elongation on the 23rd where it'll be its furthest from the sun in the sky and this is the best time to try and spot it in the morning twilight though it will be very difficult the best Milky Way action to be had from the Northern Hemisphere this month is the Cygnus region which can be found in the west as darkness falls and it continues to sink closer to the horizon to the northwest as the night goes by and then it swoops across the northern horizon into the pre-dawn hours. Another thing to keep an eye on this month is Comet C 2022 E3ZTF. Now that name is a bit of a mouthful, so let me break it down quickly. The C means that it's not a periodic comet, or in other words, it will only pass through the solar system once. It was discovered in 22. The E in Comet Nomenclature stands for March, and it was the third such object discovered in March 2022. Lastly, the ZTF means that it was first spotted by the telescopes at the Zwicky Transient Facility. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see the comet now with a small telescope, and many people have already begun photographing it. It glows at around magnitude 8 in the constellation Corona Borealis, between the bright stars Vega and Arcturus. It becomes visible soon after midnight and climbs the highest in the sky just before dawn. As the month goes by, it's going to get brighter, and the peak brightness is expected on February the 1st. Now, some predictions have it reaching magnitude 7, maybe magnitude 6 which is visible in binoculars, but not quite naked eye visible. But then other predictions have it reaching magnitude 5, which is naked eye visible. And although that seems a bit optimistic at the moment, comets are always full of surprises. By mid-January, the comet will move into Botes, then visit Draco, and then Ursa Minor for a couple of days, where it will reach its brightest on February the 1st, whilst it's in the constellation Camelopardalis. As we enter February, it will start to be visible from the southern hemisphere as well, so be worth you guys keeping an eye on its progress, and I'll update you all in next month's video. 
Onto the southern hemisphere where the winter hexagon is known as the southern summer hexagon and whilst it will rise in the east in the evening skies like the northern hemisphere it crosses the northern skies instead of the southern skies and then it will sink down to the west and eventually to the west they're all taking Mars with them again as I mentioned earlier after opposition last month Mars fades quite significantly this month from minus 1.2 to minus 0.3 Jupiter is found high in the west as darkness falls and it will sink down and set in the west before local midnight. Saturn and Venus will be more easily spotted in the southern hemisphere thanks to the angle of the ecliptic to the horizon and you will also experience the conjunction on the 22nd where they'll be less than half a degree apart. And then a day later on the 23rd is when they're joined with a beautiful thin crescent moon. The best Milky Way action this month will be in the south and southeast with the likes of the Crux, Carina and Vela regions of the Milky Way. The studded regions that you can only see from the southern hemisphere. Full moon this month is on the 6th and it is a micro moon as the moon will be approaching Apogee which is its farthest distance from Earth on its orbit. So it will actually appear a little bit smaller and a little less bright in the sky although typically it's impossible to notice the difference between a micro moon and a super moon with the naked eye. Before we dive into the special events this month, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. And as a happy customer with Squarespace for the past six, maybe seven years now, I can happily recommend them. You can start with one of Squarespace's award-winning themes. Everything is drag and drop. What you see is what you get. It's so easy to create a professional looking website. It's a place for me to share my images and galleries. It's a place for me to sell products and make money. And I've said this many times before, but I would not be a full time photographer if I didn't have my online marketplace in Squarespace. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Alan. Start a free trial, set up your website, and once you're happy with it and you want it to go live, use the code Alan at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name with Squarespace. So the first special event happens on January the 1st. There's a lunar occultation of Uranus where the moon will briefly block Uranus from view and it's visible from northern Europe, Greenland, Iceland and Russia. I'll put some links in the video description down below. But as Uranus is not a naked eye visible planet you do need some sort of visual aid like a, some binoculars or a telescope or a digital camera. It's not something that you'll be able to enjoy with a naked eye like we did with the Mars occultation last month. And speaking of Mars occultations, there's actually two this month. So the first is on January the 3rd and this is for Sub-Saharan Africa. So South Africa, Madagascar. Again, I'll put a link in the video description down below. You guys get to enjoy a lunar occultation of Mars. And then 27 days later, on the 30th into the 31st, there's another lunar occultation of Mars, this time in southern USA, Mexico, and Central America. So I'll put links into the video description down below. Last month's occultation of Mars was incredible. There were so many wonderful images uh, submitted into the Witten's competition. I'm excited to go through them. And it was just awesome to see so many people out shooting something unique and different in the night sky. Then on January the 3rd into the 4th, we have the Quadranted Meteor Shower. Now, the Quadranted Meteor Shower is its interesting because in a dark sky location with no moonlight, you can have around 120 meteors per hour during the peak. But in order to experience the peak, you need to be in the right place at the right time. So first and foremost, the radiant point is within the constellation Botes, which sounds confusing because normally Meteor showers are named after the constellation within which the Radian point lies. Like the Geminids are named after Gemini, the Orion is after Orion, and so on. But the Quadrantids are named after a constellation which no longer exists. Quadrans Muralis didn't make the cut when the International Astronomical Union officially defined the boundaries of the 88 constellations that cover the entire night sky. So the constellation is no more officially, 
but the name of the meteor shower lives on. And as Bootes is very close to the North Celestial Pole in the northern half of the night sky, this meteor shower is very much a northern hemisphere affair. But not only do you have to be in the northern hemisphere, you also have to have a bit of luck that it's nighttime in your location when the peak occurs, because the peak only lasts for several hours. And so whilst the peak is happening, it might be daytime in your location. Now the current prediction, well, the current best prediction for the peak is around about 3 a.m. in universal time on January the 4th. Um, so universal time is the current time in the UK. Just be aware that these predictions are very rarely accurate. So if you have clear skies on January the 3rd into the 4th and you're in the Northern Hemisphere, just get out and try your luck. The bad news is that there's a full moon on the 6th. So on the night of the peak, there will be a very, very bright moon to compete with. So we certainly won't see 120 meteors per hour. But uh, quadrantids can be bright and they do produce a decent amount of fireballs. So if you can catch the peak, even with that moonlight, you should get some decent meteors. And that's all I've got for you this month, guys. Now on to the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph and then upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens. And then I pick my favorite three for a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky calendar. And first place wins a copy of my book, Photograph in the Night Sky. To end the year, I decided to do two sets of prizes for this video. So there was one set of prizes for the Lunar Occultation of Mars and another set of prizes for the Geminid and Ursid Meteor Showers. So starting with the occultation in third place was Chameleon360, and there were a lot of similar images to this one, but I thought this one was just the most natural and the less touched. I know a lot of people try to pull out a lot of clarity when it comes to photographing the moon, but this one just came across very natural, and uh, that's why I chose it. In second place was Moya's Astro with this great perspective. Mars just feels very distant in this image, and I quite enjoyed the labeling of the craters as well in the foreground. And in first place was Nebula DVA with this image of Mars just nipping behind the moon, and this is a stacked result from a video file. It's not a composite, and yeah, just absolutely loved the detail and the depth in this image. As for the meteor shower images, in third place was David2101 with this image of a, a snowy Winterberg soil land in Germany, I guess. Um, just really nice colours, lovely editing, and a very naturally processed result. In second place was Tony M Photo with this beautiful image from North Yorkshire. Really nice collection of meteors all radiating from the radiant point in Gemini. And then in first place was this image from Brennan Gilmore Photo. Image of him and his father enjoying the meteor shower together next to the fire. And I just loved the, the rich story of this image and uh, a really nice big Gemini meteor in the sky as well. This month I'll be looking for images of the comet, either of the Uranus or Mars occultations and the Venus-Saturn conjunction. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.